Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Asian Pacific Mass Olympiad for 2003 problem number one. This is a good problem to do if you're just getting started and comfortable with the polynomials. If you've looked at our polynomial series, which I invite you to check out, this is a good problem to you know, start off with where you don't know what's happening. And I invite you to do it for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45, not more than 90 minutes. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, give this a go for the next 10 minutes. Put your first ideas down on paper. What would you do here? How do you approach this problem? So let's begin. We have that really this means that the zeros of this polynomial are going to be eight real numbers which are all positive, right? That's what this means. So now what do we know? We know p of x is also equal to, so x times x minus 1 times x minus x minus 2, all the way till, put the, put the dots in the wrong place, x minus x8. And now what does it mean? Like this is true for every x. So how can we combine these things now together? This thing and that. Well, we know by Vieta's rules now that you're going to have x to the seventh. Like, what's going to be next to x to the seventh here? Well, the factor is going to be you're going to have x to the seventh times negative x1, negative x2, negative x8. And so we have negative 4 is equal to the negative sum of the xi. So we know that x1 plus x2 plus x8 is equal to 4. And furthermore, for the 7 here, well, how will we get the 7? Well, how do we get the factor next to x to the power of 6? Well, it's combinations. It's x1 times x2, then times x, 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 6 times. x1 times x3, times x, times x3, and then times x, 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 and then x2 times x3. So all the possible combinations. So we have, I'm going to write this down in terms of, xi times xj, this sum for i not equal to j, and maybe maybe even i less than j, right? We can write, actually i less than j is I think more correct because that I'm specifying what it is, but I, the important part is that you get what this is, is equal to what? Seven. So that's all we have. And we have f is going to be the product of all of these roots. And it's going to be the positive product because x1 times x2, we get a positive, like negative x1 times negative x2, we get a positive x1, x2. Then we do x3, x4, x5, x6, 7, 8. And we get that f is equal to the product of these roots. Okay? And this is by Vieta's rules. These are known as Vieta's rules. So. Now, given we have these pieces of information and that all the xi are greater than zero, how do we get to this? And the answer is, well, doesn't this look a bit strangish to you? Like, sure, here we have the pairs, and there are a choose two pairs, which is four times seven. And this is equal to seven, but the other hand, like, all of these numbers are kind of like less than a half. So just like kind of like between it, like many are less than a half when one of them is less than a half. So this multiple, you multiply them together, this falls down. So how do you, like, is this really, how, how often is this realistic? And now let's sort of think about that. I invite you to pause for five to 10 minutes and think about how would you use these two facts together? And the answer is, well, if I square this, I'll get really, so if I get x1 plus all the way till x8 squared is going to give me the sum of the squares, x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x8 squared plus two times this thing. Let's call this thing s, two times s, which is equal to seven. This on the other hand is equal to what? It's equal to four squared, which is 16 if I am not mistaken. So we have a 16 here. Here we get two times this plus two times this, which is the 
the sum of these squares, x8 squared plus 14 is equal to 16, which means that the sum of these squares of the xi's is equal to 2. My question for you is, does this make sense for you, for this thing to be true, this and this thing to be true all at the same time? And here I'd invite you to pause for a bit more, for five minutes and try to see if there's anything you have from here. And the answer is, well, I can write if I do two times s now. I'll do two times s. It's going to give me 14. But if I subtract, like 14 is also equal to, if I have these squares, I have them seven times. Seven times x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x8 squared. Now this is all, this is two times x1, x2 plus all the cyclic ones, two times x, seven, x, eight, are all the possible combinations. Is this really always true? And the answer is, well, this is really like an inequality now. You have the same number of terms. You have seven times eight here. You have two times eight choose two, which is seven times eight. So you can actually factor this as x i minus x j squared, the sum of all of these for i not equal to j, i less than j, this sum squares is equal to zero. And now what do we do? Sum of squares is equal to zero. We could have also done here, we could have said, let's use the arithmetic and quadratic means, that inequality, the sum of the squares of xi, the square root of them, is greater than or equal to what's it called here it should be i think eight times their sum x so actually it's this over eight this whole thing over eight greater or equal to this whole the sum of them all over eight and um, this thing right here it needs to be an inequality, though if we plug in the values, we're going to get a, what's it called? We're going to get 2 over 8, the square root of that is, so we're going to get 1 over 4, the square root it gives us a half. Here we get 4 over 8, a half. If we have an equality, that means all the xi's are equal. So those are like the two ways we could have gone to equality. And now this implies that x1 is equal to x2. This needs to hold true because these are positive real numbers, the xi's. And given their sum is equal to 4, this means all of them are equal to a half. And then there's only one possible value of f, and that is 1 over 2 to the power of 8, which is equal to what? That's one oh that's 16 times 16 1 over 2 5 6 so the only possible value f can take is 256 and i'm actually here now I'll pause for a minute and just like take all of this in see if there's anything that you don't quite follow and then you'll pause and look back at the video if there's something algebraic that makes not a lot of sense i think the biggest part, the biggest idea here is to see like the Vieta's rules is technique and this is why I wanted you to do this problem if you just start off with polynomials, technique building in polynomials. But the second part is seeing the inequality and seeing the equality actually is an equality and solving the equality through the inequality. So those are like the two big ideas. And this finishes up a nice, it's a nice little cute problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.